Hello, everyone. I'm Judge Janine Pirro, along with Harold Ford Jr., Jesse Waters, Dana Perino, and Greg Gutfeld. It's 5 o'clock in New York City, and this is The Five. Move over, Dark Brandon, and get ready for meme Lord Biden. The president's campaign thinks the way to win back young voters is with more Internet posts. Joe's team put up this job listing, looking for someone to, quote, manage day-to-day -day operations in engaging the Internet's top content and meme pages. Team Joe is doing everything they can to make the 81-year-old fossil in chief look like Justin Bieber and connect with Gen Z voters. Sadly, there's not enough memes in the world to make Joe look any younger, especially when the candidate, the candidate himself keeps looking like he escaped a nursing home. And the lackluster candidate is getting lackluster support. A Biden campaign event in New Hampshire is getting mocked for being sparsely attended. One journalist who covered it saying, quote, I'm waiting for someone to shout bingo, but leave it to Joe Scarborough to defend Biden's senior center campaign strategy. Joe Biden, you know, it's never going to look like Beatlemania when Joe Biden steps off a, a plane going to an event. <laughs> Joe Biden's, Joe Biden's about normalcy. And by the way, if you don't think that's a, a, a winning message in 24, you're not talking to the right voters who, even if they voted for Trump in 16, are exhausted now. <laughs> and if you can't make Joe look young, just try to force people to support him. The ladies of The View are trying to bully Charlemagne the God into endorsing the big guy. Charlemagne, now is not the time, in my opinion, to sit this one out. Yeah, oh, not, I, I didn't say that. I never said I was sitting it out. Why do y'all need us to say this if we don't feel comfortable saying it? No, no, it's not that we need you to say it. Others but I do. think I think other folks need to hear. The reality is, I think both candidates are trash. So because I because I'm but I am going to vote in November, and I'm going to vote my best interest, and I'm going to vote who I think you know can preserve democracy. And you know, when you look at somebody like President Biden, it feels like his base is pretty pissed off at him. For, for a Help him out. Help him out. Well, no, look, I, I actually... <laughs> Help him out by doing what? <laughs> right. Jeez. Okay, you know, what do you think, um, why is there such a difference, Dana? I'll go to you first. In terms of young voters, it, it was historic in terms of their support for Joe Biden. And and, and now, I think it was 24 points yeah. in 2020, and now I think it's just four points. It's the same candidates. Right, well, so remember, like, they were most enthused about Barack Obama, and he brought them what they believed was hope and change, and they loved it. They would have crawled over glass for him. They would have done anything. And then in 2020, they're like, okay, well, we really want Bernie Sanders. But since Barack Obama told Bernie Sanders to hightail it out of there and Biden was going to be the nominee, they're like, fine. But now they're just looking at all of the issues and they're just not there. In fact, when Richard Fowler was here yesterday, he agreed that the most enthusiastic that the Biden voters are right now is for the feeling of apathy. So they're enthusiastic about not being a part of it, which is why Biden needs to do this uh, classified ad to say, hey, uh, we need somebody to create some memes for us to get it going on the Internet. The thing about Trump is that his meme game is excellent, but he doesn't have to hire people to do it. He has good people that are doing it. Right. But his fans are doing it for him. Right. Sometimes that gets him into trouble. OK, but yeah. the fans are doing it for him. His voters are doing it for him. And then that is, gets viral. And you don't have to pay for that. So the kind of earned media President Trump is getting, not just from what he says and what he does, but then he'll go into a rally in the Bronx, for example. That's different. When I read the New Hampshire Journal story mm -hmm. about Joe Biden's appearance yesterday, I would have thought it was written by, like, one of you guys. Like, I, I was like, it is so funny to me that they're sitting there saying, is Joe Biden's voters, are they still practicing social distancing? That's how few people were at a campaign event it was supposed to be an, a, a way to get, get enthusiasm from people there. The campaign is just spending time that they don't have. Like, you have two things in a campaign, let's just say money and time. 
the Biden team is spending time that they don't have on things like that. And it's actually pulling them backwards into more apathy. Well, then the question, Jesse, is what do they do, given the fact that they're losing the youth vote? I mean, how do they make up for that loss? And you got Charlemagne the God saying, I'm, you know, I'm not going to vote for him, or he may ultimately, saying they're both trash. How do you make up for that? You do everything we've been telling him to do. <laughs> <laughs> and make uh -huh. it work in the next seven months, Judge. It's too late. Everything's locked in. And the reason you have to be good at memes is because there has to be something fundamentally underneath the meme to make it stick. Like, Trump's good at golf and Biden trips. So then they just have Trump hit a five iron and it hits Biden and he falls. Or Trump, they ask him, how are you going to pay the bond? And he turns around and he goes... Cash. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You have him hugging the American flag. You have him putting his hands on the globe with all the arrows. <laughs> those are those moments that just, it, they're so sticky. You, you, you don't even need to make a meme out of it. The meme makes itself. J memes are fun, too. There's nothing yeah. fun about Joe Biden. And he never says anything. He never does anything. So there's nothing to work with. If he was going to meme, I would say lean into the tyrant. I would say, what are you doing on Wednesdays? Oh, you're free. I would say, I'm going to lock you up. How are you going to look at the in the prison jumpsuit, Donald? That's the only way J Joe Biden can pull off the meme game. Now, as far as the New Hampshire event, when you do an event like that, the basic people that are coming are you get your two state senators, you got maybe a half dozen state legislatures, and you have your volunteers. So that's about 20 people. Mm -hmm. There were about 30 people there, Judge. Yep. Yeah. So they can't get they can't get 10 more people than the people that have to be there. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. We could say the five is going to New Hampshire tomorrow. We could get 3,000 people tomorrow. This is the president of the United States. <coughs> I, I don't see it happening. All right, some breaking news here. Nikki Haley says she will be voting for Donald Trump. Harold, That's what good. say you? That's good news. First of all, it's good to be back. Good to hope everybody had a good weekend. I wasn't here yesterday, I know, but I, uh, I did have a good weekend. The, I think it is great that Nikki, Nikki, for Donald Trump, that's a good thing. You look yep. at that map where she was uh, securing a lot of votes, anywhere from 15 to 20 percent, 10 to 20 percent in closed primaries. That's important. And I think it also suggests that maybe she's open to uh, being the VP. But let me get to your question. Let's concede up front, neither um, Trump or Biden, we had a segment last week, I think, on being cool. Neither of them are cool or hip. Let's get that out. Number two, it's not uncommon in campaigns, I think, to try to figure out the best way to communicate with voters. Memes were not around. A lot of technology was not around when I was in, when I was in Congress and was running for re-election, even when I ran for the Senate, which is almost, almost 20 years ago now. Um, so things are changing. So hiring somebody to do that, I get. Where I agree with Jesse uh, wholeheartedly is that Joe Biden's going to have to learn to campaign a little unconventionally. I saw a poll today, to Dana's, uh, Dana's point about a week ago. Trump has evidently narrowed the margin here in New York to single digits in some poll between he and, between he and Biden. And we were not laughing, but I was not taking it seriously when President Trump had the big rally. I think he, he might have misrepresented, based on my sources at, the, uh, at that rally there in New Jersey, that he had 100,000 people, whether it was 30,000 or 100,000. The polling data shows that things are, are tightening. So if you're, if you're Biden... Why don't you just fly up one night or fly up one morning and go to Charlemagne to God's show? Call in. Do something unexpected, which I think is what you were suggesting. But, you know, something unconventional. Hold on one sec. Just something unconventional and not just the, the state old things that they're doing, which I don't think are working quite as well as they want. Now, I think some of the polling, the New York Times, Siena polls, I agree with all these polls. I think you have to listen to these polls. I don't think they're dispositive yet of where the campaign or the election is going to end. But I think it's important to, to, to understand who they're polling and what the mood of the country is, because I think at the end of the day, this race is a vibe. This presidential race is a vibe race, depending on how secure people feel, depending on what the number one issue is. Is it abortion? Is it border? Is it still the economy and inflation? How people feel starting in early October when that early voting starts and whatever number of debates we're going to have happen, that person will be will be the winner of this election. I think it's too early to call. I think it's going to go back and forth. But one thing is clear. Biden needs some different kind of campaign tactics and style to really impact 
and resonate with more voters, particularly young voters. Greg, one of the things that Harold says is maybe Joe Biden ought to jump on a plane and, and fly to Charlemagne the God's radio show. Wouldn't he have to be funny there? Wouldn't he? He could hurt himself more than help himself. Yeah, somebody else would have to pack that parachute. Um, <laughs> I want to piggyback on what Jesse was talking about, the memes. People... <coughs> What is a meme, right? It's a singular combination of words and images that go viral. Why do they go viral? It's a visual punchline. You get it instantly. And it has a greater significance than Trump or Biden because memes can actually change the way you think by exposing unspeakable truths. You know a meme when it works because you get it. The left cannot meme because... You need instant recognition of an obvious truth that makes you laugh. And the left traffics in the opposite, right? The, the left takes an obvious truth and abstracts it to a point where it's an academic exercise in relativism. It's why there are millions and millions of memes about weird men identifying as women. Uh, when you get the meme, it's obvious and it's hysterical. There are no memes to refute that because that would require everything but the obvious truth. You need poli politics and ideology. The memes about Biden, the memes about crime, the memes about immigration and inflation explode online because they say the immediate truths that the left usually want to silence. Memes get around the TV gatekeepers, right? You can have Lawrence O'Donnell go on forever about something, about rebalancing. A meme will come in and poke that hole and it deflates. Memes can speak for themselves. A great example is Let's Go Brandon. Why was that an enduring meme? Because it was based on an obvious troop, truth about a liberal lie. They weren't saying Let's Go Brandon. They were saying F Joe Biden. But because the left said it was Let's Go Br Biden, the meme became a yeah. natural, mm -hmm. obvious truth. Mm -hmm. Let's, we'll take it, let's go, let's go, Brandon. There's no, way in, in this, and the reason why I say this can change the way you think, a lot of times it takes something to punch you in the face with an obvious truth. It's like when you're dealing with trans and they show a guy, a, a large strapping man, beat a woman by, I don't know, a hundred lengths. You need a meme that says, cut the BS, you know what this is. The left cannot do that because their whole argument is that you deconstruct truth. Truth does not exist. Can I mention one thing on that before we go back to Nikki Haley? On it's, it's like the memes have become what would have been a great television political ad in the 80s. So yeah. where's the beef? Mm -hmm. Right? And everybody knew exactly what that meant, that there was yep. no policy behind it. And therefore, there, that was why like Mondale's falling apart, right? So... The meme now it becomes one of those things where you can also shoot it around. Mm -hmm. Like don't you think it's funny? You think you send it to your friends, you send it to people who might disagree with you, and it becomes again, it's like the most free media that you can get in a campaign if it works well. I have a really okay. good one about it, Michelle Obama. I'll show you in the break. Okay, okay. Yeah, I guess it's really good. But before we go to the break, uh, Dana, what do you think of Nikki Haley oh, finally right supporting uh, Donald Trump? Um, yeah, I, th I admire her for many reasons. One of them is that when she decided uh, it was obvious she was not going to win and that Trump was going to become the nominee, she went home. She did that entire campaign without her husband being here because he was deployed. He's part of the reserves. And she waited, and he got home. They've had time together. She had quiet time with her family, which is what she said she wanted, and she just waited a little bit. And I admire somebody who doesn't feel like they have to fill the silence all the time. She is now the chairman of the Hudson Institute, which is a really great foreign policy think tank and really, I think, is great for her leadership style and something she really cares about, which is foreign policy. So making this announcement today... About, um, we're about, what, five weeks before the Republican convention, mm -hmm. as, as people's minds start to focus. But I did think, I wrote down one thing. Um, she said many times in that primary, we're not running against Biden. We are running against Kamala Harris. With the mm -hmm. implicit being that Biden won't make it for another four years. That's what she was saying. So I wonder if President Trump will start to pick up on that a little bit, because he definitely goes after Biden a lot. Not so much Harris, but maybe this is a way to try to get the party to all come together and see if they want to give this a real go. Right now, the polls are so good for President Trump. And mm -hmm. I mean, they're close in the swing states, but close like that. If I were Biden, I, I'd be nervous. I listened to Hacks on Tap today. That's 
with Axelrod and a couple of others, and they had the actual bedwetting episode. It was pretty interesting. <laughs> oh, I gotta listen right. to that. Yeah, so do I. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.